If you want access to energy that helps you run faster and longer and is completely free, then this video is for you. This really applies to all runners regardless of level, but maybe even more so to those who are well, not so young anymore. Let's start with how it works and then you will get the magic spell to fix you a little later in the video. You will then actually get two different ways of approaching this, so you will be a more efficient runner. Here we go. It's easy to think that muscles are doing all the work to move your body forward when you run. But as you know, if you have seen any of my videos before, a lot of the power comes from the elastic parts in the body, such as tendons and fascia and so on. This elastic recoil can give back up to 50% of the energy stored in these elastic structures. It is very easy to feel how this rubber band effect works. So let's do an experiment. If you stand up and start jumping up and down at this pace, And now you can feel how hard this is. It's probably not that hard at all. And then we lower the pace so you jump at this pace. And now it's a lot harder. Slow down, slow down my pace. Do you feel how hard it is? Yeah, and then, and then we increase the pace a little bit here. It's a little bit easier right now. And then we increase the speed again. So just small, tiny jumps up and down. And now it is very easy again. The main reason why it becomes more difficult when you jump slowly is that you get a longer contact time. And longer contact time means less energy returned from the body's rubber bands. When you don't get help from the elastic recoil, you have to work harder with the muscles which costs more energy and is more difficult than including the elasticity in the drive, in the push-off, in your running. So now two questions. What do we do to maximize this rubber band effect? And what is the weak link in the body that we need to focus on? To explain this, we can look at where the power in a running stride comes from. In simple terms, we can say that the power comes from the ankles, the knees and the hip. And it's quite easy to see with the naked eye where the weakest link of the three is. There are simply significantly larger and stronger muscles that creates power in the knees and in the hip than there are muscles to create drive in the ankles, which is largely about the calves. And studies have shown that it is often the power from the ankles, the calves, that decreases when you get tired during a race. It is also the case that age plays a role and that runners get less and less power from the ankles, the calves, the older they get. It then becomes quite clear that it is important to have strong calves and, not the least, strong and stiff Achilles tendons, the body's largest rubber band. You can then maintain the pace longer into a race and if you're a slightly older runner you reduce the decay and deterioration that often comes with increasing age. And that's quite good, right? Being a 56 year old runner this applies to me as well of course. And now let's take two examples from two different studies to see how you can verifiably do this to get this part working better, to get a stronger and stiffer Achilles tendon and stronger calves and more bounce in your stride and then free energy with the elastic recoil. Studies tend to have a very, very, very long title and the one we start with has the short and simple name of Jump Rope Training Improved 3 km Time Trial Performance in Endurance Runners via Enhanced Lower Limb Reactivity and Foot Arch Stiffness. That is the title. And this was published in the International Journal of Sports uh, Physiology and Performance in 2019. They took 96 recreational runners with an average time around 50 minutes on, for a 10k and uh, split them into two groups. Both groups followed a training program for 10 weeks. 
they trained twice a week in the first two weeks and went up to three times a week, week three to six, and finished the last four weeks with training four times a week. The difference between the two groups was as a warm-up. One group did rope skipping for five minutes, while the other devoted the five minutes of warm-up to dynamic mobility training. The rope skipping group initially jumped on two legs before moving on to jumping just one leg at the time every other jump. Before starting their training program, all 96 participants were tested, including a test run of 3000 meters, that's 1.86 miles. Then all these tests were repeated after the 10 weeks. And it turned out that the rope skipping group had developed more strength in the calves and had a better and stiffer Achilles tendon, which they are therefore better at storing and giving back elastic energy, and also improved their times on the 3000 meters significantly more than those who warmed up with dynamic mobility training. So, five minutes of jumping as a warm up whether you do it with or without a rope will make you a faster and stronger runner. But there is a risk of it being a bit too much if you start with five minutes of rope skipping straight away. And therefore we can also look at another study with similar improvements but with less jumping. So let's turn to the study Concurrent endurance training with either plyometrics or dynamic bodyweight training both improved running economy with minimal or no change in run running biomechanics. And that was the title and it was published now in April this year 2023. As the long name suggests, the actual biomechanics of the running were not changed by the jump training done in this study. But still, the running economy improved significantly. Again, they jumped for five minutes. However, they only jumped for 10 seconds at a time, but did it every day for eight weeks. The first week they jumped for 10 seconds and then rested for 50 seconds before jumping again. And they did that for five minutes. So they only had five rounds of 10 second jumps. The second week they rested for 40 seconds between the 10 second jumps and the third week 30 seconds and then continued to reduce the rest. So after a few weeks they only rested for 10 seconds. So 10 second jumping, 10 second resting. And the researchers found that a 3.9% improvement in running economy after the eight weeks. And that is about as much as Nike says you will improve if you run with their super shoes compared to running in classic racing flats. However, this is much cheaper to just bounce up and down a little bit. And in case you're wondering, no, none of the runners in the study were injured by the jumping. To help you remember how they jumped each week, I made a picture that you can take a screenshot of. And the picture? comes here. And this is perfect if you haven't done much plyometric training before. If you are more experienced you might be able to go straight to the five minutes jumping that was done in the first study I mentioned. But really it doesn't matter exactly how much you jump as long as you do in, don't do it too much, but you do some jumping, some plyometrics. And you should also remember that the runners in both these studies were regular, normal, recreational runners. This means two things. Firstly, the weaker and less fit you are right now, the greater the improvements will be. And secondly, if you're already a fast, strong and experienced runner doing regular plyometrics training, you can obviously go harder with more, higher and more intense jumps and also add drop jumps and bounding and so on. So this week's take home message is, and I will now quote Van Halen, everybody jump! I truly hope you liked that video and if you did please click the like button and maybe also the subscribe button. 
And feel free to check out all the other content I have here on my channel. And maybe you are also interested in my online course. You'll find it at fredrickzillen.com.